Haiti. Land of beauty. Land of pain. Hundreds of years of political instability and endless violence have made this Caribbean island nation one of the poorest lands on earth. For most Haitians, every day is lived on the edge of survival. For those with a disability, even survival is uncertain. Simply walking the broken streets and crumbling footpaths of the capital is difficult and dangerous. There are few of the medical services we take for granted in North America. Here, only two hours from Miami, artificial limbs are rare and unaffordable. Simple things, crutches, braces, orthopedic shoes, wheelchairs are beyond reach of most Haitians. Physical rehabilitation is almost unknown. Nowhere in the Western Hemisphere can modest contributions make such great differences. That's why we go there, to make that difference. To bring change to the lives of people in need and healing hands for Haiti. Healing Hands for Haiti was founded by Dr. Jeff Randall from Salt Lake City, Utah. The mission of Healing Hands for Haiti was to establish a rehabilitation clinic in Haiti. The mission is a long-term program with the goal of training and or transitioning most, if not all, of the clinical and administrative responsibilities from the North American clinicians to the Haitian staff. To assist in this transition, Healing Hands used mostly clinical volunteers from North America. And this is where the problem lies. By using well-intentioned North American volunteers to train and educate the Haitian teams, Healing Hands was challenged with an extreme and immediate clash of cultures. The clash of cultures was a product of different languages, traditions, and expectations. To be successful, both the North American volunteers and the Haitian staff needed to be culturally mindful to gain the needed communication skills necessary to fulfill their common mission. The first part of the mission was to come down and assist and manufacture artificial limbs and braces. The second part of the mission was going to be going out to small orphanages within the Port-au-Prince area assessing and aiding the orphanages with their uh, crippled children. And the third part of the mission was to educate the local Haitian people uh, in the art of, of medical rehab so that at some point in the future we could turn the project over to the, to the Haitian people. Well, my name is Michel Zumo. I'm the executive director for Healing Hands. Uh, Healing Hands is an institution based in, in Haiti. That's our main purpose is to develop uh, rehabilitation, in physical rehabilitation in Haiti, and also through education and treatment. And the way uh, Healing Hands function, we have teams of uh, professionals that comes from other parts of North America to work closely with, with uh, the Haitian counterparts. Now, you know, as you know, the, the, cult the cultural issues are uh, compounded by language problems. Uh, even within us in Haitian, we have the, the issues with language, uh, French versus uh, Creole, and then with the uh, North American, then you have the English that's added to it. So oftentimes what we use is use interpreters that will do interpretation, but oftentimes there are, the cultural components are lost in, in, in uh, translation. Every technician we train becomes a living commitment to the health care resources of their country. My name is Gail Buck and I am the volunteer coordinator for the teams that come in to uh, work with Healing Hands for Haiti in our clinic and through, actually throughout the country. The issue, the issue with um, the, like the language barrier, <laughs> the problems that I've, that, um, that have I, I've experienced have come from a language barrier 
because I'm English speaking and I'm learning Creole. And so I have to uh, really stop every day and think about when I'm talking to my staff here, um, how do I, I have to make sure that they're understanding what I'm trying to communicate. Um, and just a little story is I asked one of the staff members to cut some razor wire. And um, he said, okay. And um, about an hour later, he came into my office and cut my internet wire. <laughs> I was like, um, John, why did you cut my internet? You told me to. I said, uh, no, that's how I work. <laughs> and um, he said, we, well, you told me. I said, oh, no, I told you to cut the razor wire. He goes, come, I show you. And he went around the side of the house and he pointed to the wire. Well, there's razor wire that goes along the side of the house, but a very long the bottom edge was my internet wire. And he, I don't know how he got razor from internet, but all I could do was laugh. My name is Antonio Quebro, and uh, I'm the Director of Operations of Healing Hands for Haiti. I am here to make uh, everything available for the, uh, when the clinic teams, when they come, to make everything available for them to be able to work with the, uh, with the uh, local staff. First, there is a cultural differences that uh, we have to take care of. You see, and uh, the integration we try to we try to make the the work we ha we try to ease the work by uh, having some translators, especially because uh, sometimes communication is very hard, especially when the teams when the American teams come or the English speaking, let's say. Healing Hands has been functioning in Port-au-Prince for over 10 years. And the one dynamic that stands out the most as it relates to integration is the short time period the English-speaking and Haitian teams have to accommodate their cultural differences. It's important to note that most of the volunteers are only in Haiti for seven to ten days, whereas many organizations who experience mergers or acquisitions have an ongoing opportunity to integrate cultures. The full-time English-speaking expats and the Haitian full-time staff have been forced to create a system of communication, education, and training to successfully accelerate the integration of the two teams. So my name is um, Fiona Stevenson and um, I work with for Healing Hands. Um, I'm the clinic director and also nurse programs manager. Um, and I've been with Healing Hands for the last year, but I've been in Haiti for two years post-earthquake. In my experience being here, I was here just after the earthquake and saw many, many, many different um, cultures come in um, into Port-au-Prince to help. Um, and there's a lot of good stuff. There was a lot of bad stuff that went on. And a lot of that was about how they treated people. Um, because I guess it's almost like um, coming in from America or England or Canada or any developed world, um, you almost like come in and take over. But actually what, can hap what happens here is that it, what you're bringing in may not necessarily be the right thing to happen in this, co in this co country or culture. I saw that um, when people were, the, the people who had been living here and working here and gone through the disaster and um, they were caring for their own families as well as you know, their patients and then they had all these foreigners coming in and say don't do it your way, do it my way and then changing it. It's, it, does, it's, it gets very confusing and so I, I watch these people because I say I've been here, it's only, I've only been here two years and that's not a very long time but I've seen it's just people will step back and say okay oh well how long are you here for? Oh 
right, you're here for a week. That's great. So you could see it going in through one ear and out of the other ear because they knew that they'd have to go and change what they were doing the following week. So they'd watch and do whatever they would, they'd been doing for the last 10 years because if they change, they know it's not going to be right. A very simplistic, maybe a cynical way of looking at it, but I've actually seen that firsthand. So More than 10 years later, Healing Hands for Haiti continues to serve the residents of Haiti. Years of planning, practice, and patience had given way to harmonic cultural adaptation. The success of Healing Hands has led to Haitian teams working six days a week and ministering to the needs of their patients. The transfer of knowledge and culture between the North American clinicians and the Haitian staff has been remarkable. Even with the years of successful integration, both teams understand the need for ongoing communication and cultural mindfulness. Même si mon lacaille sans sommeil, on va bouler en bas au soleil. Même si mon lacaille sans sommeil, on va bouler en bas au soleil. Même si mon lacaille sans sommeil.